Good morning and welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. We are glad that you chose to worship with us this morning. A couple of announcements. Uh, next week is our annual voters meeting. It's Sunday, August 18th. That'll be at noon and we will meet here in the sanctuary. The agenda items will include a vote on the mission budget for 24 to 25 and to elect new members to the board of directors. Uh, Candidates are not yet finalized, but will be announced as soon as possible. Members also have the opportunity at this point to nominate themselves. Please contact Mark Meyer. Back to School Backpack Blessing and dedication of our teachers and staff is taking place today. All children are invited to bring their backpacks with them when they come forward for the children's message. We will have a dedication for our teachers and staff. Youth Gathering. It is starting again. Uh, there's a, a poster placard in the back of the church you may see on your way out announcing the youth gathering is in New Orleans this year, taking place in July. So watch for bake sales and uh, other fundraisers that will be going on between now and then. Your support is greatly appreciated and needed this year. We have 11 youth that are planning to attend and one other youth will be going as an adult volunteer. So that has tripled the amount of youth we've had since the last camp. Praise God, for he is good. Please uh, rise and turn to our opening hymn.
Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who is heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Be there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are clear. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We say together, Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, he has given his son to die for you. And for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> taken from 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 1 through 8. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba which belongs to Judah and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. 
And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is taken from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through chapter 5, verse 2. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life, and I will raise Him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about Him because He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does He now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is God. He has seen the Father. 
Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. We profess our Christian faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. We say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated with the children come forward with their backpacks at this time. Any backpacks? We had a couple that came up in the earlier service, and each one of those backpacks were different. I remember when I was younger, at least one or two were the same. Oh, oh, you're bringing up the backpacks for somebody else. You don't have a backpack? All right, well, maybe you can come up anyways. How was that? All right, receive a blessing. I know after this backpack blessing, we're going to do the children's message, so you guys are in the right spot, so don't worry. All right, I think that's everybody. So let's go ahead and pray. Lord, we ask that you would bless these backpacks and the children who are going to carry them to and from their school. Give them peace when they feel nervous. Give them focus when they feel distracted. Energy when they feel tired. And most of all, we ask that you would keep them safe when they carry these backpacks. Guide them in their steps and help their minds to remain open so that they might learn both in and out of their classroom and retain all things that are righteous, that they might give glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much. We've got some uh, little tags that you can put on those backpacks as well. So stay right there for now. And we've got a children's message for you coming up right now. I think it's the bread of life. <laughs> I was wondering, do you think I'm losing weight? I'm getting a little slim, you know. I didn't feel really good last week, so I went to the doctor because I felt crummy. Yeah. I tell you about my brother, Krusty. I tell you about him, but between him and the butter, what happened? Well, if I told you, you'd just probably spread it around. <laughs> My family's on vacation this week, but I can't get them to do anything. They're just loafing around. <laughs> well, anyway, about Jesus, I wanted to say, he claims to be the bread of life. So I got to thinking, well, let's see, if I go outside and I find a rock and I start chewing on it, is that going to give my body any energy? No. What if I uh, took one of these hymnals, I know Francis wouldn't like this, but if I took one of these hymnals and just ripped a few pages out and ate them, would that give my body the strength I need? No. Because we know that that kind of stuff isn't food, right? But well, Jesus said that he was the bread of life. So what did that mean? Did he kind of mean that, um, I think it was a parallel, right? It's kind of like a parallel, like, um, 
You know, like you look at a pebble and then you look at the mountain and you say, well, the pebble's just a small example of what the mountain is like. Or if you had a flashlight, you could turn that on and say, look, here's a flashlight. It's got a little bit of light and there's the sun and you kind of make a parallel, right? So I think Jesus was saying, just as your body needs bread or meat or vegetables or however you want to say it, but you know, bread just kind of encompasses all of that. We say, we pray in the Lord's Prayer, Lord, give us our daily bread. That means all the substance that we need for our body, right? And Jesus was saying, just like your body needs bread, your soul and your spirit inside of you needs food too. And where does that come from? Where do you think? The Word of God, right? The Bible. Because it says the Word of God is alive and active and it changes us on the inside, right? So when we're growing up, we learn a lot of bad habits and and things that we probably shouldn't be, you know, patterns of this world that we shouldn't be, um, you know, using in our life. And in Romans chapter 2, I mean chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Be not conformed any longer to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have to change the way we think so that we can be more like Jesus, right? Well, we can't do that by ourselves. And I think that's really good news that Jesus is coming and saying, I want to change you. I want to work with you. I want to show you my love, you know, and, change, and help you to become more like Jesus so that we can be more pleasing to God. Well, I think that's really good news, no matter how you slice it. <laughs> so I tell you what, I'll pray and then you guys repeat the prayer, okay? All right, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you for loving us and being our bread of life. In the name of Christ. Amen. Now, I've got to hand this stuff out here and then i got to get going because Dad said if I'm not home pretty soon that I was going to be toast. So here, I got one of these. Now, this is really cool because this is, you can put this on your backpack if you want. It says uh, on here, it says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Uh, so this comes from Hebrews 6, 19. And then on the other side, it says, This backpack has been blessed by St. John's Lutheran Church, who loves and cares for this student. Who loves and cares for this student. So you're going to each get one of these. So you want to pass those around for me? All right. And while you're doing that, I will pass out. Some food for you guys, okay? A little snack for you. Thanks for coming up. And praise the Lord for uh, each one of you. All right, here you go. Mia, you want one of these? All right. All right, All right you guys? You guys want one of these? All right, take that. That. Get another one.
peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Did you know that John chapter 6 is the first of about five I am statements in that gospel? It's the first one of about five I am statements. And while our gospel reading for today is a continuation of last week's reading, you might recall that the words I am were once used by God when Moses asked him by what name he should be called. And God answered Moses saying, I am who I am. So when we hear Jesus use those words, I am, to describe himself, it should mean something, at least to all those who are listening. Jesus says, I am the bread of life, and goes on in John chapter 8 to say, I am the light of the world. And then he says, I am the door or the gate, as well as I am the good shepherd in chapter 10. And in chapter 11, he says, I am the resurrection and the life when he raised Lazarus from the dead. So throughout the Gospel of John, and again and again, Jesus is declaring, at least to all those who will hear him, that he is God in the flesh. But then not everyone who listened to him actually understood what he was saying. And quite honestly, there are times when we don't either. This morning, I believe that he wants us to wake up a little bit more and to enliven our faith as we come together around his word and sacraments. Because once again, we hear him say, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. He uses this kind of metaphor language or figure of speech to describe the salvation that he provides to all who believe in him. Which makes me wonder, why doesn't he just say it plainly? Why does he just use plain language so we would all understand? He certainly could have said it differently. Like when he said that he came not to do his own will, but the will of the Father, and that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him, not only has eternal life, but will be raised on that last day. That makes sense to me. I can understand that. I can grasp that a little bit better. But that still leaves me with that question, why do you suppose he uses this metaphor language or this figure of speech kind of language when he talks about salvation? What insight does that really leave us with? And why does it even matter? I prayed about this for a little bit. And I think that by using this figurative or this metaphorical language, he helps us to understand that God wants us to enjoy two kinds of nourishment. While God gave us life through our parents, we also know that our bodily life requires us to breathe, it requires us to think and to exercise. And when that happens over time, well, don't we all need a little bit of nourishment to keep going? Which is why we say we need our daily bread. Otherwise, our bodies start to deteriorate over time and they die a little bit faster than they would otherwise. And I got to tell you, some of us has that covered a little bit better than others. <laughs> But there's another kind of life that God wants us to nourish. And as Christians, we all know that it's our spiritual life. We know that our spiritual life is one that comes to us by faith, through God's word and sacraments. It begins with our baptism, and 
We're born again into that spiritual life, set apart in holiness. And it's a life, a spiritual life that's marked by the forgiveness of others as we ourselves have been forgiven. It's one of mercy that we share not only with ourselves, but with others. As one marked full of love because of the love that we have first received from Him. One life that is nourished again and again by the bread that came down from heaven and continues with us on to eternity. Using that word bread that nourishes our spiritual lives, I think that Jesus helps us to understand the nature of his means of grace. Because they're more than just words. They're words that give forgiveness and eternal life. And according to 1 Corinthians 12, they're words that also bring us together. Because we're all baptized by the one spirit as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, we're all given the one spirit to drink from. So that even when we come up for communion, not only do we receive the bread and the wine as individuals, individuals in need of forgiveness, but we also receive his very body and blood together in a common understanding and fellowship that we have with one another. And it's this common spirit that we share and we confess that nourishes our faith as the body of Christ. I think that's why Christian education is so very important in our world today. Because if you just listen to Jesus' words, if you do at all, you might not understand some of this that is so important to our faith. By the way, did you ever hear about the story of the journalist who wanted to interview an old Jewish man who went to the Wailing Wall twice a day, every day, for many, many years? Did you ever hear that story? No, but you'll tell us. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> no, but you'll tell us. Exactly right. Well, first, the journalists talked to all those who witnessed what the man did for many years. And then the journalists stopped and talked to all the shopkeepers along the way to the Wailing Wall, both present and former shopkeepers. And then the journalists talked to his friends who were still living and knew that he went off two times a day to the wall. Then the journalists talked with uh, the man's neighbors who saw him every day walking with the cane slowly to that wall, to and fro, back and forth, to the wailing wall. And after the journalists sat and watched that man for almost a week, praying two times a day, about 45 minutes each time, the journalist decided to approach the man and asked him if he would answer a couple of questions. The man said, sure. So the journalist asked him how long he had been going to the whaling wall. And he said, well, about 60 years. And the journalists made a big deal out of that 60 years because they, the journalists wanted more information to write a story. So the journalist said, well, that's amazing. 60 years. What do you pray for when you're there? The old man prayed and said, or said, I pray for peace between Christians and Muslims and Jews. Then I pray that there would be all that fighting that would come to an end, all the hatred that would end, he wants to end, and the wars, all those wars would just cease. And then I pray for all those children 
that they would grow up to be responsible adults that could actually love their fellow man. And the journalist said, wow, that is just perfect. I can't believe what else you might pray for. How do you feel when you have been doing this for 60 years? And the old man replied, well, after all these years, it feels like I've been praying to a wall. <laughs> It certainly seems like nothing has changed for a long, long time in this world. And some days we can feel that way when we read God's Word and nothing really speaks to us. Why does any of this really matter at all? Why are we going through the motions? Why do we come here on a Sunday only to leave to go and get something to eat? Why do we do this time and time again? And sometimes we start to disengage and can't even make sense of out of God's Word when we read it. Because without the Holy Spirit working in our lives, encouraging us and giving us faith to believe, it can certainly be hard for anyone to understand and believe the words that our Lord speaks to us. And that was certainly the case with those Jews in that gospel reading who heard him speak. If you recall, they grumbled and said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it that he says, I have come down from heaven? They didn't understand him. So Jesus reiterates for all to hear, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. Why? Because it's not just water alone, and it's not just bread and wine alone. But when we believe in God's word, in, with, and under the simple water that brings us forgiveness and salvation. It makes all that stuff possible in God's holy baptism. It's belief in God's word in, with, and under the bread and the wine that gives to us forgiveness and salvation, making it possible to actually eat and drink his body and blood. And while Jesus uses words to speak figuratively, all those who believe in those means of grace, in those words, that means of grace that he gives to us, actually receive God's eternal salvation that he came to bring. Maybe that's why he sent us his Holy Spirit. Because we certainly need His Spirit to help us understand that He isn't just the Son of Joseph and Mary, but that He is that living bread of heaven that came down for us. That we might truly understand and believe in those words that He chose for us to learn. And how our, His Spirit is nurtured within us. That we might receive that eternal life, which also gives life to this dead world full of sin. Our Lord even says in verse 56 of John, The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Making it possible for us not only to receive his forgiveness, but that eternal life that he came to bring, you and I. Because he rose again on the third day. Jesus is the bread of life, and by his spirit, not only are we enabled to understand his bread metaphor, but it also clarifies and nourishes our own faith at the, time, at the same time. And in doing so, 
He ensures that we have a full, active, dynamic, and intimate faith with Him as we live out our lives in this world. He uses words, certain words, on purpose. That it might nourish our faith. Words like bread and life. Giving us a greater understanding of what it means to eat his body. Drink his blood. That we might have that salvation and believe that he came and gives it to us even today. That happens through his means of grace. His means of grace that shares with us forgiveness and life. Which brings us all together in a common hope. That one day by the grace of God we might see him face to face and live with him forever. That's what we all share here. When Jesus uses the words I am to describe himself. It should have meant something to those people who heard him a long time ago. Not only did he say, I am the bread of life, but he also said in John's gospel, I am the light of the world. I am the door, the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. But he, because he is God, he is God in the flesh. So that you and I and everyone who hears his word might believe and have the eternal life that he came to give us. So often we need his spirit working in and through us. That we might truly believe and gather around his words. That we might understand those metaphors that he uses. That we might have a greater understanding of the faith that he wants us to have. That we might be nourished by that faith. Be given greater insight into his means of grace and the working of his spirit. Who calls us to be together. To worship him in this place. He is that bread that came down from heaven. Because if we truly eat his bread and drink his cup, he will abide in us and we will abide in him, giving us eternal life. After all, we have his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you sent your Son to be the bread of life, giving eternal life to all who come to him. By your Spirit, lead the whole church on earth to imitate you and walk in your love as beloved children. Lord, in your mercy, Give strength and courage to all pastors and those who assist them, especially those suffering from conflict, burnout, and depression. Hearten them by the example of Elijah and the prophets and the apostles before them. Comfort them through the forgiveness of sins and the promise of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, through holy baptism, you have joined the faithful together as your children, making us brothers and sisters in your Son, Jesus Christ. Give us grace to believe that through Christ we belong to one another. Lead us to put away all falsehood and malice and to speak Christ's church, truth to one another in love. Lord, in your mercy, your bless all fa- families and homes that one generation might tell the next the wonderful works of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayers for our nation. Cause us to live in harmony with one another 
and free our citizens from all want and suffering, danger and fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. show kindness to the sick, especially those who are dealing with COVID right now. Never let them be in doubt that you do hear their prayers. Relieve them from pain and provide for those who suffer from any kind of hardship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. bless those who commune this day that reconciled to each other in Christ's body and blood, they might rejoice to receive your forgiveness through this precious gift and be strengthened in all times of doubt, nourished in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to be the bread of life. Together with all the faithful who have gone before us, we give you thanks and praise. Keep us steadfast in that faith so that when our last hour comes, we may rejoice with them at the marriage feast in his kingdom, which has no end. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's go ahead and take a moment to share God's peace with one another. I'm sorry. <laughs> you need to get a higher view of my head. <laughs> what happened to your curls? <laughs> Peace be with you. <laughs> you might want to go light on the communion one again. <laughs> Good morning, dear. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Have lunch for you? Oh, mercy. I don't know about that. Hopefully not too long. Pack a snack. With the teachers and the staff of our St. John's Lutheran will come forward at this time, right up front here in front of the altar. We've got a couple, just a couple. We had a little bit more this morning in our first service, so come on forward. This morning we want to recognize and dedicate all those among us who plan to be working at the school, especially during the uh, coming school year that begins when? On Wednesday? And you guys have been already been in the school getting ready for that day. Because there's a whole lot that's going to happen starting tomorrow, right? And what happens tomorrow, Tiffany? Uh, we got open house, meet the teacher. Open house, meet the teacher tomorrow. So the teachers have to be in ready to start talking to our parents and probably some kids as well to tag along. <laughs> So uh, you're going to be interacting with those children and parents and families, and I hope that you share God's good news with them. And so I want to ask you, as, uh, as a pastor of St. John's, do you promise to the best of your ability to use the gifts and talents to support the ministry, the Christian education that goes on in our school in the capacity of your position and to promote and nurture our students' faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. If so, then answer, I will with the help of God. I will, I will with the help of God. God. You said that very loud and proud. Thank you so much for doing that. Will you be faithful to your task and take seriously the commitments of your time and talent to benefit our students? If so, then answer, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. Will you be faithful to each other as a staff working together as a team in the position as educator or administrator or support staff and sincerely do all the things that you can to show the love of Christ in the coming year of so then say, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. And I think on that piece of paper, you're going to share something else as well, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, why don't you go ahead and say that together. I will, I will with the help of God to be faithful in the love that I share to my students, their families, as well as to my fellow workers. That I will help 
enrich the educational ministry here at St. John's. Fully trusting in God's promises to support, sustain, and to encourage me to use the gifts that he has given to me for this purpose. I'm glad you have those yellow sheets so that you can take them back with you and you can actually look at them time and time again. So, uh, you've all heard that faithful pledge that they just made before you and before God. So, as a congregation, why don't we go ahead and say some words back to them as well. And so we say together, we pledge in Jesus' name to pray for you all that you may be enabled, encouraged, supported, and loved in both word and deed in this important ministry to the students and families of St. John's Lutheran Church School. And finally, let's go ahead and pray to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Eternal God, you have entrusted to us the message of your gospel through Jesus Christ. And so we lift up to you all those who will serve here at St. John's Lutheran Church School. Help them to serve you well in nurturing the spiritual growth of all who are entrusted to their care. Bless each one of them, especially those who are gathered before us, and enable them to be channels of your grace. And finally, encourage us all to share our time, talents, and treasures in this endeavor. All this we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So let's go ahead and give them a big round of applause. <laughs> so we continue now with our apostle prayer. <laughs>
please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.